Some brand new video showing the daring rescue of two Israeli hostages in Rafah. IDF troops broke the hostages out of a building in Gaza before loading them onto a helicopter and flying them to safety. The overnight raid and the Israeli response to it could be the clearest sign yet that an Israeli Hamas peace deal is far away. Just listen to the IDF spokesperson. We have a moral obligation to bring all our hostages home. And that is an obligation that we will continue doing everything, everything in our power to fulfill. Question one. Israel faces intense international condemnation for what's happening to Gazans, to civilians in Gaza, particularly from the Arab world. But you hardly hear anyone, in fact, nobody in the Arab world, calling on Hamas to do anything to protect the people of Gaza, particularly none of the leaders of the countries on your screen. All of them profess to stand with the Palestinians, yet none have said Hamas should surrender, stand down, in order to save the civilians in Gaza. That was also the case today when President Biden met with the King of Jordan at the White House. Neither of them called on Hamas to surrender. President Biden got close, but he was far more concerned with the refugees, the Palestinian civilians. Brett Bruins with us, former director of engagement at the Obama White House, now head of the Global Situation Room. I want to play for you the soundbite of President Biden talking to the king. Take a listen. The, the major military operation in Rafah should not proceed without a credible plan, a credible plan for ensuring the safety and support of more than one million people sheltering there. I'm wondering why there is not more pressure by the United States on the Arab world, particularly on Abdullah, on al-Sisi in Egypt, to force Hamas's hand. Yeah, and I was going to particularly point out al-Sisi because he holds the keys to the gates to Gaza. So this whole humanitarian crisis that we have built up over several months, and certainly what we're currently facing in Rafah, comes down to Sisi not opening his borders so that Palestinians can take refuge, so that there can be an organized process of providing humanitarian aid. And yes, uh, Israel needs to take every step uh, imaginable to prevent uh, civilian casualties, but Al Sisi, as well as the Jordanians, as well as the Emiratis and the Saudis, have to do more, one, to restrain Hamas, and two, to provide that kind so of assistance. So why is there pressure by the Biden administration publicly for that to happen? Well, because they're trying to do this delicate diplomatic balancing act. They've tried to keep uh, the Arab world from outright uh, coming out uh, against the United States, from breaking diplomatic ties with Israel. But at the same time, they're not just getting enough from uh, these Arab leaders, and that's the problem. And I think it's been, and we've talked often about uh, the negotiation tactics that the Biden administration uses, whether it's on Venezuela, whether it's on uh, China, whether it's on you know, some of these other countries where they seem to cede half of the territory before they've even begun to, to press them. And, and here again, I think there is more that we can be asking mm. of the Arab world. Dan Perry, um, world affairs analyst who led AP's coverage of the Mideast, Europe, and Africa, he was a good buddy of mine when I was over there, spent a lot of time in difficult places. Uh, here was him on Israeli television. Take a listen. The idea that they have to hold out, no matter the cost, to their own people reflects a fundamental sickness that I would like to see the Arab world call out. Reasonable people can agree that most, if not all, of the leaders of the Arab world, El Sisi, Abdullah, uh, just to pick Egypt and Jordan, but certainly through the, the Gulfies, would love nothing more than for Hamas and the Muslim Brotherhood to go away because the, that they're, they're next after Gaza. Again, why is there this sort of complete lack of willingness to hold Hamas responsible? Well, uh, it comes down to the Arab street. You have a population that does have sympathies for those who are taking the most extreme measures against yeah. both Israel and the United States. And so leaders like al-Sisi and, and the argument went, you know, let him get through the elections and then he will take a harder line against uh, what Hamas uh, is doing. That hasn't yet panned out. Oh. The idea that there's elections in Egypt is another another topic. Um, real quick, I wanted you to get you on this. The uh, Israeli Defense Forces discovered a tunnel shaft near an UNRWA school. Huge terrorist 
tunnel beneath UNRWA's, that's the United Nations uh, Refugee Works Agency in Gaza. Uh, big tunnel, huge Hamas headquarters under the UN buildings, and there's obviously been evidence of UN workers helping uh, Hamas and participating in the October 7th attacks. Is it time to, on this issue of refugees, to sort of ra radically rethink how we look at the Palestinians in the UN? Well, I think UNRWA has a lot to answer for. And uh, whether it's uh, this latest incident, uh, the staff, as you mentioned, that were participating in some of these terrorist attacks, they have got to be, and I've worked in a lot of countries with UN peacekeepers, UN uh, operations, they have to be neutral. And they clearly were not in this no. case. And there has to be some fundamental changes at the UN. Thanks for watching. Go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.